Hello everyone, Arxie here. Welcome back to Palouse, Washington. Now we are moving from the small roller farm that's on the other side of the river and heading on over this way to our big farmyard, uh, which has quite a few fields to deal with. In fact, we have all of them. Uh, every field over here is ones we own. We've already got some of the guys out, some of the team out there working already. You can see a couple of combines in there getting some uh, some crops started on. I think there's some peas actually that they're harvesting in there. So we'll get in and have a look and go and check out how things are going. But let's just turn in here and have a little bit of a look-see. Like I said, first field being harvested in here. Boys have been underway for a wee while now, getting the headlands opened up. It's started up and going, which is nice. Look at the undulation you can see on that though. Crazy. Frank cart sitting there and our truck as well. And then it looks like, as I had thought, we've got a couple of swathers up and going. Now we're being a little bit experimental in Palouse. It's uh, not that common to see flax growing here. Um, and as a result we are having to swath it and we'll pick it up later. So give it a chance to dry out. So they're in there going around and doing that. And we've actually got a few fields of that around here. Mainly around the yard. But uh, here we are. This is home. This is the big farmyard in Palouse and this is our big farm and you already see from what we've driven past and as we drive in here we've got some pretty decently sized and specced equipment including a whole lot more sitting in the shed so we'll pull up we'll go and have a look I can see that one of the grain carts or one of the combines does need emptying so we'll have to go and take care of that but uh we'll have a look around the farm I'll show you what we've got here first and uh, then we're going to go and get a couple more combines set up and started on some wheat as well so uh, it's going to be all go it already is all go here so first things first, we'll go and have a look in the shed at some of the equipment. So we've got four of these uh, Case 8250 combines. Uh, we've got two here that are in the shed still, and obviously the two that are out there. And uh, we've got the 45 foot draper headers for all of those, as well as two pickup headers. So we've only got the two swathers, we've got the two pickup headers. Obviously it wasn't worth investing heavily in that because we are experimenting a little bit with that, uh, but that is what we're running. We've got one of the biggest quad tracks out there, the 62. Uh, 620, so I was going to say 6200, the 620 there on the front, 620 horsepower, uh, that's going to be a bit of a beast and mainly for our tillage work I think, uh, we'll see, I was playing around with the Steiger on the grain cart but it seemed to be struggling just a little bit there with the hills and uh, managing to get up and down those. We've got two uh, Titan fertilizer spreaders here, these are the uh, four wheeled versions, obviously they do come in a three wheeled version um, but on these side hills definitely went for the more stable four axle or four wheel dual axle version so we've got these spreader beds on the back of these the black version and the red one uh, and then through the other side here we've got a couple of uh, spray modules on so we can unhook the spreaders and uh, put the sprayers on there too so when we need to get into any weeding or anything like that bit of an older tractor it's uh, done its time it's been with us for a while the MX285 uh, not a huge amount of use for it at the moment but uh, we're going to keep it I didn't want to get rid of it then we're going to have a look over here, a uh, bit of a jack of all trades truck, the Mac there, use that for seeding and things like that because we do have some air carts which have augers so we can get some product put in there and go and take that straight out to the field and tip and keep those guys going. And then we've got a couple more of the uh, Magnum 400s here, so they are beautiful tractors, nice, big, nice and stable on these hillsides, uh, so looking forward to getting out into those and they're probably going to be pulling our cedars, I think predominantly, we'll see how they go. I'm hoping they're going to have enough power for it. Uh, let's go and have a look out here. Two 60 foot cedars. Uh, nice big tool bars there. Obviously no planter because there's no real row crop work done up here. There's no corn, there's no soybeans, certainly no cotton or uh, sunflowers or anything like that. If we did want to do sunflowers we could actually plant it with this as well. We could actually plant soybeans with this too but there we go, two of these so uh, matching planters there. So again we've got a lot of acreage to cover when and uh, when we need to. Some bins here, fertilizer, lime and seeds, so some of those have got some in it, they're not full. Uh, I think there's a couple with some seeds in that one, and then it looks like it's got some lime in it, did it say? Yes it does, and then I think this one might have some fertilizer. The end one's empty at the moment, but we've got a couple of the augers there. Unload auger and then the overfill auger to fill them up from the top. There's our spray support trailer, uh, no deck on the back of it or anything like that. Obviously, we're all pretty close by, so this will just go out into the field, drive the sprayer to it, uh, and we've got the two bins, obviously, because we've got the two sprayers, so we can keep them both up and moving. Pressure washer. Every farm needs to have a pressure washer. Uh, fuel tank. We run past it. And liquid uh, tank there. So mainly for herbicide if we need to do any spraying or anything like that. 
um, what's it got on it? 10,000 litres of herbicide and 10,000 litres of fertiliser. One of those magic ones where you can have two different crops, uh, two different types of liquids in it. Now, there's a little bit of a story behind this truck, and I'll tell it very, very quickly. Uh, we've got the freight liner up the front there, and uh, the um, B train set up. Well, it's not really a B train, is it? It's got the pup trailer on the back rather than anything else. So, the twin trailer set up, and this is actually modelled um, Corp Nut, one of our channel supporters, uh, been heavily involved in our multiplayer servers and things like that. He used to drive a truck pretty much identical to this in the Palouse region. Um, it's a little bit different, has had a slightly bigger cab I think, or uh, there was something different with the truck, but looks very similar to some photos he sent me with a very similar trailer setup. It's the closest I've been able to get it for, uh, from what I can find on um, mod sites and things like that, so uh, I'm looking forward to having a play around with that, and you might have seen we've actually got two of these trucks, but the other one's just running a uh, single hopper trailer, so that there is a little bit of a unique setup. Um, what else is there to see? We've got some tillage equipment over here, a couple of John Deere plows, and two of the land, doll, uh, land discs there. It's for all our tillage. And then around the corner, well, before we go around the corner, there's the two pickup headers I did mention before. The other two draper headers for the crops, and uh, they will be getting those out very soon to go and get into the wheat. And uh, another grain cart here. So obviously when we're running a couple of different fields, we'll be putting crops into both, so we do need both. Uh, this one's got the dual wheels on the back, uh, the other one had the tracks, so be interesting to see how those perform and how they go differently on the hillsides and in and around these fields. As it comes with the map, or with the farm here, we do have the big grain complex up here. It does have a dryer, although we're not going to actually need the dryer because obviously we're not going to be doing any corn or anything like that. Hopefully all our other crops come in nice and dry. Um, but we'll be using that to store everything until we get it to a good sell point, or good price to get things sold. So. That's basically, stand up here and look back over and survey our uh, empire. That's basically what we have here on the big farm in terms of an equipment setup and what we're going to be doing. So lots of course play and uh, we will try and set up some auto drive as we go. Uh, we haven't got any on the farm or any auto drive set up at the moment. So we'll build a course as and when we need it. Now taking a look here at the map and as you can see, uh, we've got a bit of a variety of fields and uh, a variety of crops in them. All the other side of the road there is all planted in lentils, so we're going to have a big session getting over and harvesting all of that. You can see the peas here, this is the field number six, is where the two combines are working at the moment. Got the other big field number three up the top here as well. All the flax around the yard, this is all for our swathing, so you can see the two swathers are working there in field number two. And then up the top here, sort of in the hillier country right up above the river, uh, a whole lot of wheat. So we are going to get in there, that is going to be our task today. We're going to head in and try and at least get field number 11 harvested. We'll see how we go. We might even pull the second uh, two combines there out of the peas. Possibly tackle maybe number 10 on uh, with the four combines. We'll see how we go from a timing side of things. But uh, lots of harvesting to do. We might call on the help from our friends over the river with these smaller fields. I don't really see the point in putting the big combines in, let's say, field number 20, maybe even 19, 15, uh, when we saw how quickly. The little John Deere 6600's got through those two fields up there with the lentils. It would be worth throwing them into a couple of these fields and keeping the big machinery running on the big fields. Uh, there will be a little bit of changeover between the farms. There's no spreader or anything like that down there, so we might take one of the uh, fertilizer spreaders or the lime spreaders down for when we need to get some lime applied onto those fields. That's basically the overview of what we're going to be doing here on the big farm in Palouse. So that's enough talking. Let's head on back down. We'll go and get the grain cart working on those two combines making sure we're keeping that moving and then we'll go and pull out these other two combines and go and get started down in one of the wheat fields so it's not doing too badly actually we're not going full tilt uh, and you can see when we get onto a little bit more of an incline we do struggle and drop a little bit of speed but all in all the tractor's actually handling pulling this okay it is half full um, I don't know if I'd want to be pulling 60,000 litres of peas up here but I think it's going to be manageable we'll just have to make sure we empty out as frequently as we can. Now thank you to everyone who commented on the last video as well. We get one comment uh, about unloading and what they typically do in this area would be to park a grain cart on a flat area and the combines would actually unload into the grain cart rather than the grain cart unloading on the go. Um, mainly because of the terrain and everything like that from a, from a safety uh, point of view I can just imagine. It's probably not the easiest thing to do to drive a grain cart beside a combine and unload on the go. Um, so that would be what would normally be done. Obviously uh, our limitations with course play auto drive and things like that 
The only way I have thought we could possibly simulate that would be to use course play to unload into the trucks on the edge of the field. Um, but I imagine if you were going to be doing this in real life, uh, the combine operator would be smart. They were only 70% full, but on offload on their way back past the truck instead of filling up another 30% and then having to turn around and go back. So it's probably a little bit of uh, that side of management that you can't simulate in a game uh, without you know, controlling it yourself. Using course play isn't going to cut it, but at least we can simulate some of that and we will try and give that a go. But thank you to uh, whoever that was that commented on my last video. I should look up the name. In fact, I'll share a screenshot down on the bottom of the screen right now showing exactly who that was. Thank you very much to you. Anyhow, we're going to carry on here, we'll get this one unloaded, we're probably actually going to have to go and dump this into the truck because the way these are filling up is uh, we're going to get through these pretty quick, hopefully. I'm going to get around the corner or is it needing an unload too? Looking at it, hopefully it's going to get up to us here uh, and we can take the top out of the hopper and then go and get this dumped into the truck. But uh, I forgot, these peas yielding very, very nicely considering we've put no attention into these fields at all from a precision farming fertilizing point of view. So anyhow, let them catch up to us. Fingers crossed they're gonna get here and we'll get them unloaded and then we'll be on to setting up the combines in the wheat field. So 53,000 liters of peas here, we've filled it up already. Go and get this emptied out into the truck. Um, it's gone all right. Actually did it all right. Still handling it, not too bad. So we're going to get this dumped in and then we'll probably, I'm not sure on the capacity of the trailer on the truck, it'll actually be interesting to see how full this uh, crane cart makes the trailer. It might be that we have to run straight up to the farm. Now of course, not too much of a hassle because uh, you can see the silos just there down at the end of the track, so we're not having to go too far to get to them. Pop our auger out. We'll get zoomed in just a little bit. We navigate our way in here beside the truck and uh, get this all dumped in and unloaded. And the commas are going to start on a land setting. I'd be interested actually if anyone from the region or anyone who's familiar with harvesting and that on this type of terrain, how would you normally harvest it? Would you go round and round? Do you follow the terrain and contours of the land? Uh, would you work along say a ridge, uh, uh, a ridge hilltop and then go down uh, the side from there or exactly how would a combine work on this terrain? I'd be interested to know more about it but Ah, as I thought, we're not going to fill the truck, well, we are going to fill the truck up. We're not going to empty the grain cart into this trailer, so uh, we we'll have to run that back down. And then we'll be able to come and get the combines to set up on the wheat. So just a touch under 39,000 litre capacity here in this trailer, so not the biggest one. Um, probably a good size for this size of farm, actually. Not so much for uh, hauling long haul, or if we were going to go and sell or anything, but to negotiate between field and silo. Probably actually going to be quite a good setup for that. Not too big, uh, nice and manoeuvrable. So head on up here, hopefully we're going to plan. We're going to be able to unload this and get the first load of uh, peas, first of our crops, into the bins. Let's have a look. Driven up over here and there we go. Got our trigger, which is good. Zoom in there, you can see that unloading there down the bottom. So uh, we'll let this get unloaded, dump them both out and uh, then we'll be able to move on. So the first two combines in the peas are all under control now, I think. Uh, we'll have to go and empty them out again soon, but they're well and truly into their lands. Uh, so we're going to go and get hooked up here. We do have a hitch here on the back of these combines, so we'll be able to drag the headers up ourselves. And uh, of course they do have the integrated trailer, which is a very nice integrated hitch and everything like that. So there's no mucking around with trailers or anything like that. Header trailers on the edge of the field. I do like these ones. we backed up in here. now. I would have liked to have used some side hills and I am aware, I was made aware, I never realised that there is a uh, power levelling vent in the in-game um, store that's a default in-game vehicle and it does have some levelling function which is quite clever. Now I did have a bit of a play around with it and found that if you put too big a header or anything on it, it actually didn't follow some of the contours very well at all. Uh, so we've decided not to use it at the moment, um, other than that the only other options are very small combines and to be harvesting this amount of land at this sort of area would take us forever so hence using the 8250s here with the bigger headers and uh, sort of avoiding the topic of side hills uh, I've seen some impressive photos that I think I mentioned in the last video of some side hill combines working in this area so uh, it would have been great to have something we could use uh, maybe we'll look at doing it 
maybe next year we'll look at trying out some of the different side hills and see how they will work as a little bit of a test here but for now I just wanted to really get into having a play and doing some harvesting on this beautiful map and uh, this was the best way to do it so we'll head on up this way we'll go and get up to the header and we'll get this combine up and running on the first field uh, and then we'll be able to bring the other one over and get them both working at the same time there we go combine number one up and underway here in the wheat a few weeds in this field like i said we uh, are not responsible in fact i just noticed horse plate is going to drop us our swath so we want to jump in here and turn that off we want it to be activated all together should get rid of that there we go we'll be able to plow that under but for now we're just going to get that straw chopped and spread over the field uh, but yeah like i said earlier we are not responsible for the field prep or anything like that uh, we've inherited this farm in the state it's in uh, so we've got a few weeds in this field um, i haven't noticed any in too many though it certainly doesn't look like there's any over in that bigger wheat field over there to the left there uh, so hopefully it might only be this one that has them but anyhow this field's definitely a lot bigger it's going to take a wee bit longer getting going here but we're already up to 15 percent so we better right along go and get the other combine over here bring a grain cut over look at how steep that incline is wow uh, and we'll get things uh, get things up and going. All right, combine number two up and underway as well. So uh, now we are all moving. Let's go and see. I think I can see in the distance there the other two in the peas. Both look like they need unloading. So we'll go and get that done. Uh, Swathers, on the other hand, look at the job they're doing. Are racing through that field. So uh, we'll probably move them into one of the fields on the other side there behind the house and get them going in there as well. But I hear them certainly flying through, getting that flax all cut down and ready to dry out. So after seeing the Steiger struggling just a little bit with that grain cart in the first field, I decided uh, we'd put the big beast here on the second grain cart, uh, particularly as we have to go quite a way over the field to catch up to these combines. This one's a lot bigger, so to be able to get to where they are, just start to see the lead combine there, stopped up on the near the top of the hill, ready to unload. Uh, second combine there, just about catching up. But look at that, look at that view. You can see our fields just over there in the distance uh, where we were working last time the uh, older equipment so it's the crow flies not very far away at all but uh because of the terrain because of the access it's a wee way to get there but here we are both of these are actually looking pretty full hopefully that second one's going to stop in just a second won't go any further let's get in here underneath this and uh, we'll get this combine back up and going we all emptied out and then we'll be able to get that second one done at the same time uh, but this is starting to remind me a lot of uh, my West Aussie series where I spent a lot of time running around managing equipment and keeping things up and going, which is kind of what I wanted to replicate in some slightly smaller scale, but in a similar sense, uh, that we had a whole lot of equipment up and running all at the same time and did our best to manage it and keep it all moving. So uh, fingers crossed we can try and do that. Bearing in mind we're working on the smallest of the fields really at the moment, uh, I was just looking at those as we were heading over here and certainly take a look in just a second certainly these fields relative to some of the other ones on the map are uh, certainly not the biggest and we're going to have quite some time to get through and get it all harvested but uh, looking forward to the challenge looking forward to it anyhow getting here now we've got these combines out of the way which we'll be able to once the lead combine gets far enough away and the convoy mode kicks in the second combine should move and we should be able to get them unloaded go that's good now the two combines down the front and the peas they can't be too far away from being finished so once we've got this done and probably got the truck i've uh, got the tractor back out to the other side of the field we are going to need a truck up here very soon as well uh, we'll jump back down there check them out and figure out what we're going to do with relocating them to another field the first field of peas done here two combines very conveniently waiting there to be unloaded to be able to get through here hopefully should be able to fit both the uh, hoppers in there and let's get them and see how far we can go hopefully we can now i've been having a look i was contemplating even though i said we'd get the smaller john deers from over the other side to come over and give us a hand with that smaller field there i was contemplating throwing one of these combines in there just to get it done but i think we will leave it uh great to see them over here working alongside these bigger machines so what we are going to do once this is all unloaded the only other field of peas we have here is field number three so i think we might take both the combines over it's back through the yard the track which runs up the back here between fields one and two we will jump in here and they can make a start on field number three 
Two Swathers there in field number two, they're both finished, so I think we'll jump them across into field number one and they can start doing some swathing there in that field. Uh, meanwhile, two combines up here in the wheat are up and going just fine, so uh, it is working out all pretty well. Like I said though, it's a bit of work keeping on top of them all. I was hoping to get some time put together a little bit of a montage, do some time lapse and those kind of things, but uh, at this rate, we're just going to be jumping back and forth between pieces of equipment, making sure everything keeps moving. But uh, it's a bit of fun, it's a different style of play. It's a style of play I like doing and uh, I'm enjoying it, so that's the main thing, isn't it? Anyhow, I'm just going to get this emptied out, we're probably going to have to take a couple of truck trips down. Uh, in fact, we could probably take the grain cart down instead of bringing the truck back and uh, we'll dump this off back in the yard. We'll have to use the truck to get through into the unload auger, into the um, hopper for the bins because there is the overhead bin above the uh, dump pit, which means we can't actually access it from uh, a grain cart or anything like that. Just a little bit, of, a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. Um, so we will do that. So before we were able to finish off the peas there, I had a call from these combines here with the wheat, and they were getting pretty full down the end of the field. So jumped over here, emptied them out. Out, well, we couldn't actually empty them both out. We had to take about the same amount off both, uh, just because we would have ended up with full grain cart down the wrong end of the field. We're heading back, but uh, gosh, even with 620 horsepower, this tractor's struggling to pull a fully laden grain cart up and down these hills. So uh, we might have to give some thought and some consideration to potentially want to get hold of another one of these. Or, uh, well, there's not really much bigger than this, um, but at least and get something because I think the Steiger is going to be a little bit of a handbrake when it comes to working in these much bigger steeper hills which are a little bit further away from the farm. Uh, that front field we had the peas in, probably not too difficult really compared to what some of the other terrains like. So something to bear in mind, we might have to manage quite carefully. We're going to have to go grab a truck now too, we don't have a truck up here for the wheat. Uh, so all hands on deck, everything is uh, everything needs to move all at the same time and it's really keeping us on our toes. It's fun. First things first, we'll get the peas unloaded out of this truck. Get that dump out there. The trigger out. There we are. Yeah, front hopper out. Again, I'm not gonna bother taking this back down. In fact, I wonder if we can just back back enough to be able to give enough space for the auger wagon to pull up beside us, empty into the truck. And then we can just simply pull forward unload it into the pit. Hopefully that will work but you can clearly see that overhead bin and the gantry and the frame and everything supporting it. No chance of getting the uh, getting the auger wagon in here to unload it directly into the pit. Um, it's a little bit of annoying. Anyhow, let's try this. Back this up here. we parked about there and that should give us some space to bring the auger wagon in. Um, before we do that, we grab the other truck and on up to the wheat field. I think we've got here not a moment too soon. We'll just get turned around here at the crest. Head back down into the field. Uh, I can see the wheat poking out the top of those combines. Those hoppers are both getting pretty full. So I think we're going to be here just in time to be able to take the top out of those and fill up the grain cart again. Let's just pull up here beside. I'm not even sure. About what did we say in the last truck? 53,000 so litres? Quite, it was only 38,000, wasn't it? So it'll be interesting to see much we can get in this uh, truck and trailer combo. In fact, the second grain cart over there is just gone and got a full header, a uh, full combine, so that is one we're going to have to go and address very soon. Finishing the second headland pass, they are actually going to start on some lands now, so uh, that'll be good. That'll slow things down just a touch as well. It looks like this, uh, this setup is actually going to have a higher capacity than the other truck, which is nice. Good if we could take a whole grain bin one load. It's Let's wait and see. Get 53,000 litres total across these two trailers. It should be uh, potentially worth replacing the other trailer with the same setup again. Just about perfect. 96% full, and that's the grain cart empty. So, uh, yeah, not a bad setup. We might look at making that little tweak too. I think the way these crops are yielding, without even having done any of the uh, full on precision farming requirements. We're going to be kept on our toes, particularly when we get four combines working in the same field. Let's head on back over this way. I'm going to get this combine emptied out and uh, get them out of the way so they can start on the lands. Now, I did notice actually when I was looking back across, this is the first evidence I've had of uh, the terrain causing some skipping with the header. 
so only a couple of little, little sections, very very small sections, it's there and there, so uh, manageable, but uh, obviously not ideal. Here we are, get turned in behind the combine, we'll start unloading. Well this looks like it should work out pretty well, let's be able to nose up in here, get into hopefully just the back hopper. We've got 18,000 litres. Not quite. In fact, it should. What would we have? 37. It'll be pretty close. Let's wait and see. Let's take it all. There we go. Just. Just the right amount. That's good. So we'll get back out of there. And uh, we'll go and get the truck emptied out. We've got the wheat truck to bring down here. It's full. And then we've got these combines to get moved. And the swathers to get moved. Lots more equipment juggling to go. But, uh... We'll leave this just uh, sitting down here in the yard at the moment. We won't need that over in the field immediately, although it's not going to be too far behind with the way that the peas in that first field were yielding. We're going to need to uh, keep this grain cart moving. It's field number three now. We are in here and we've made a start on the peas. You can look back across, you can see our swath field there with the flax. And uh, then you can see the two combines working over there in the wheat. The two swappers just parked up down there uh, next on our list of things to migrate to a new field. Uh, looks like the wheat combines are still moving though, which is good. Um, one thing I've been thinking about, we need to have the vehicle inspector mod installed because then we can keep a track of what's full when and where our priority needs to be, or our attention needs to be prioritised to so something to keep in mind. But uh, should this slope going down into that part of the field? But course place set up obviously uh, the lands are going to be going in this long dose direction much the same as the two wheat field, other wheat fielders at the moment so that's going to work out pretty well as well uh, once they get going and having some nice long passes so uh, we'll leave these two going which the front line must almost be 30 percent full already so uh, we'll head on over the wheat field and get them empty out over there and we'll back here with the other grain cart uh, and we'll just keep these guys moving too First time using the speed sync mod for some time and uh, it does a really good job when you're running a green cart, green cart or something like that syncing up the speed here with the combine. The combine's handling this hill no problem, staying at 6 miles per hour. In fact if anything, I'm just trying to accelerate up the hill myself manually and uh, we were really struggling to keep going. Here we go, everyone is having a hard time on this terrain but let's get over this crest. I oh, should be able to carry on unloading in fact we so close to uh, empty, we'll keep some capacity, we're just going to leave that one there, spin around and head back around behind us to this combine which we're going to have to now struggle up the hill with again, uh, because the reason I'm doing this is we haven't emptied the truck out yet, so uh, we need to go and do that, that combine is looking almighty full, in fact I don't think I'd be wanting to fill the hopper up quite that full when you're about to go up the incline this guy's on, uh, not so much because you've got all the weight up there, but more than likely, then drop some wheat over the back of the hopper and uh, make a bit of a mess. But we've got to it just in time. So, yeah. Top taken out of that hopper and uh, we'll be able to carry on. I knew this farm was going to be pretty full on with the challenge I've set myself with the equipment, the fields, the amount of harvesting we're going to do, but I've got to say, even what we're doing now has exceeded my expectations with uh, how busy we're being kept. I'm going to have to certainly invest some time into some automation, uh, auto drive will be a big help, even if it's just to empty the trucks out, we're not doing this all the time. I think uh, next time we're on this farm, we might spend some time doing that, but for now I just want to keep things up and moving, uh, so we'll make the best use of what we've got and the time we have available to us. First things first, move that truck there out of the way, and then we can hop in here with this one and empty it out. Still could get the grain cart up into the other field as well. Uh, those two combines and the peas, they'll be screaming for us any minute now, I imagine. Nice track up here. In fact, I'm really enjoying it. Nice little area. Squeeze on up in here and find somewhere to park. Doesn't matter too much where it is, just as long as it's not on the field and in the way of the combines. It's probably as good a place as any. So we'll leave that there and get on back down that combine, uh, get that truck unloaded and uh, back up to the wheat field. Another load of peas heading out, which is our first load of peas heading out of this field. Uh, we've got the slothers moved over here into the flax here on the right. The wheat field's just about finished. I've not got much more to do, so we're going to have to decide what we do with transferring them into another field. 
Now we've also got the big one which is right next to where they are. I'll go and have a look at it in just a second. Or we could go to the one uh, which is also next to them on the other side of them, but more access from the road. I'm kind of inclined actually the more I've thought about it to go into the biggest field and just run the two combines in there. Just to try and keep on top of it a little bit easier. Uh, obviously we've only got the two pickup headers so uh, when we come to doing our swathing and picking up the swathed flax we've only got two combines that are capable of doing it anyhow so maybe we focus on getting the peas finished then we'll have two combines that can carry on the wheat we can jump over and do some swath pickups and uh, then once they're all done on that we'll cross the road and get into the lentils so who knows we'll, uh, we'll formulate a plan and just make it up as we go just like we normally do but I reckon we might try and in amongst all our jumping around between vehicles and different fields and keeping things moving we might try and just put together a little bit of a montage of all our work summarise uh, kind of what's been going on around this part of the farm for today and uh, see how that all goes so uh, sit back, relax, enjoy and we'll catch up with you in just a little bit So things are progressing pretty well here. We've uh, got through a mountain of work. A lot of fields covered, a lot of land covered, and a lot harvested. Let's take a quick look in our silos and see what we've got sitting in there already. So 165,000 litres of wheat there, and a value of, well, maximum value of about 84 grand, and 212,000 litres of peas. So combined, almost uh, 400,000 litres of product harvested. So that's pretty impressive. I must say, I am pretty happy with that. Peas as well, almost $150,000 of value sitting there, so it's gone very, very well. I want, am trying, uh, we did put the grain carts running on course play just to see how they worked and if they would manage that for a little bit, just to let me come and sit here with the swapper and follow them along just for a touch. And, uh, well, I don't actually know how well they're going, except we're chilling through our money having all these workers running, so I might have to adjust the course pay wages just down a little bit. I don't mind having wages on, but uh, I might just bump it down a little bit that money is really disappearing very very quickly but uh, I think that is going to do us for today here on Palouse and uh, the big farm we'll leave these guys going we'll leave the combines going and hopefully get all those fields finished so when we're back next time we're making a start in some fresh fields and uh, carry on with the work that we've done uh, but next week next episode we'll obviously be back over at the small farm 
we've got some uh, peas over there to harvest this time, so we'll be into those fields with the peas, and uh, we'll see how that all goes. But anyhow, hope you've enjoyed this look here, the first day here on the big farm in Palouse. Uh, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.